I saw, I saw it right here at the same time. Okay, you guys, I'm going to go back and rehash this really, really quickly, okay, for the recording at home. Okay, so if I have two points, uh, C, F of C, and C plus delta X, F of C plus delta X, to find the slope, I would take this Y coordinate minus this one, and this X coordinate minus this one, And we'd be left with this fraction overall of f of c plus delta x minus f of c over delta x. So now, if so, that's the equation of the c, or the slope of the secant line. To get that to the slope of a tangent line, all I want to do is shrink up this distance between my um, x to shrink up that delta x. In other words, take that exact same secant secant equation. And I want to take the limit as delta x approaches 0 so that the difference between my two points is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, Turner showed that to you guys this way. And we'll use that one moving forward. The idea being h is the same thing as that delta x. And so as it goes to 0, we're no longer talking about a secant line. We're talking about a tangent line. So let's look at an example. Um, this equation that we had to find the slope of the tangent line we call this the forward difference quotient And the way it'll be worded, say, on a test or whatever, is um, use the forward difference quotient to find um, the derivative. And then I will give you that equation. So you don't need to memorize that. I'll give it to you on the, te on the quizzes and or tests. OK. So in this particular case, since we have a specific value for x, what we're going to do is take the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. Everybody good? All right, what's f of 2 plus h? <coughs> so then when we simplify that, we get 3h plus 11. Everybody good with that? And then what's f of 2?
Okay, so we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0 of 3h plus 11 minus 11 over h. What do we see? The 11s cancel. They cancel out completely. They go to 0. The h's cancel to a 1. And overall, this limit is equal to 3. Everybody good? All right. Let's do x equals negative 1. So we'll do f of negative 1 plus h and f of negative 1. How are we feeling? Okay, so now to use that forward difference quotient, I'm going to take the limit as h approaches 0 of h squared minus 5h plus 6 over, or I'm sorry, minus 6 over h. So then I'm going to take the limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to factor an h out of the h squared minus 5h. And I'd be left with h minus 5 over h. And you guys see that the h's will cancel? So what's the limit? No, because we're taking the limit as h approaches 0. It's just negative 5. Now... You guys, the graph of x squared minus 3x plus 2 looks kind of like this. It's a parabola. And at h equals, or I'm sorry, at x equals negative 1, we're talking about this point right here. Are you comfortable calling, I'm going to do it in a different color. Are we comfortable calling that negative 5? That's like, I mean, it's negative and relatively sleep, steep. Everybody good? Okay, now, at x equals 3, we're looking like maybe right here. We would expect it to be positive, right? So let's check out x equals 3. How would this change? Well, we would do f of 3 plus h and f of, and f of 3.
Did I do that correctly? I'm getting h squared plus 3h plus 2. And then f of 3 is just 2. Okay. And when I fill into the difference quotient, are we getting, are you guys getting three? Yeah. Lovely. So, and doesn't, does that kind of fit our picture? We were expecting it to be a positive slope. It doesn't look quite as steep as this one. Yeah. Okay. Now, in these particular cases, okay, in these particular cases, um, we had specific x values that we were finding the slope at, okay? But notice that um, I, when I got different slopes depending on which x value I was at. Is everybody with me? So here we found the slope at x equals negative 1 to be negative 5. We get a different answer at x equals uh, positive 3, yeah? Okay? So... Um, and, and all this does is it tells us the equation of the tangent line, and then we could use, it tells us the slope of that tangent line. Do you guys remember finding the equation of a line using point-slope form? Where you did um, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Does that feel familiar to you guys? So if I asked you what is the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1, well, we know f of negative 1 is 6, so we're going to do y minus... 1 equals negative 5 times x plus 1. And I don't know why, you guys. This should be y minus 6. I'm having some brain fart moments today, for sure. And then for this other one, we might do y minus 2 equals 3 times x minus 3. Hopefully this is familiar. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do next is instead of investigating at specific x values, we're going to come up with an equation that models all of the different slopes. So like I said, you're going to use this uh, forward difference quotient. Um, on the test, I give you this only in, with h instead of delta x because that does feel like what you guys are more familiar with, right, is the H here. Okay. Um, are you good with this notation, this notation, and this notation? And they all mean the same thing. Don't worry about this one. I'll never use it. Ever good? Can you explain the third one? It just means it all it's means saying, the same thing, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we could say that we were doing D dx of x squared minus 3x plus 2. And that just means that is like an operation of take the derivative of. Are we good? All right. Now, let's look at this one. Now, how many of you guys know this derivative just looking at this? We're expecting it to be 2x minus 4. On one question and one question only, I will have you do this forward difference quotient. Once we're done, it's done. Okay. It'll be, a, I think there's one on the quiz. I'm pretty sure there's one on the test. Ever good? All right. So if I ask you to prove it using the definition of the derivative, my expectation will be this. F of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I ask that you take the limit of it. But I will give you the general form. Okay. From here, we just take the limit. 
I would get very comfortable if you are not already of knowing that x plus h to the quantity squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. But I think you guys are probably familiar with this, yeah? And then we have minus 4x minus 4h minus x squared plus 4x minus 2 all over h. Did I make a mistake? The plus two in the middle. I sure did miss it. It was going to come back and bite me. Sure did miss it. Everybody good? All right, what are we noticing? The twos cancel. The four X's cancel. The X squared's cancel. So if you have done this correctly, every term that's left should have an H in it. So, we're going to factor an H out of the top. And then we take our limit. The, the H's would cancel. As H goes to zero, what is the value of 2X plus H minus 4? 2X minus 4. Because that h becomes a zero, yeah? Did you guys have to do this last year? I don't think so. I'd be shocked if you didn't have to do this. In fact, I know she's teaching it today. <laughs> All right, you guys. So at x equals negative 1, what is the slope of the tangent line? Well, we would do 2 times negative 1 minus 4. Negative 6. How are we feeling? Let's see, f of x plus h would just be 3 over that x plus h, yeah? We good? Minus f of x is just minus that 3 over x all over h. Thoughts? Can we simplify this at all? The answer is yes. Anybody want to guess at a way we could simplify it? Multiply by either x or h. And sub multiply what? H. Well, we can't just multiply it, right? But so, so are you want to multiply by h in the bottom? I don't know. I look at this and I say, this would be a lot less complicated if I only had one fraction in the top. Are we, are we all comfortable that this would be easier if I only had one fraction in the top? Okay. And in order to get one fraction in the top, I need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top by x plus h or depending on which fraction. And I'm only going to do this in the numerator. And the other thing I want you guys to see, guys, is um, this minus 3 over x. Go ahead and view that as neg plus negative 3. So when I go ahead and take my keep going here, the first fraction becomes 3x. 
the second fraction becomes minus 3x minus 3h over x, x plus h. And then I still have that over h in the denominator. How are we feeling? So from here, do you guys see anything that might make our lives a little bit easier? The three x's should cancel. Love. So now I'm going to take the limit as h approaches zero. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to write my top fraction, negative three h over x times x plus h times, instead of doing divided by h, I'm going to multiply by 1 over h to help me see it. And the minute I did this, what can I do? I can cancel the two h's, those two h's. And now if I take that limit as h approaches 0, What do I have on top? What do I have on the bottom? The look on your face suggests you're not convinced of this. Okay. Are we good? One more way I might ask you about this question. This Oh, and then you guys, what is the slope at x equals 2? Negative 3 fourths. Once you have that equation of the derivative, finding the slope at any given point, you just fill in for x. All right, one more of these. What are you guys thinking? I think you. Mm hmm. I would get rid of the square roots. How could we do that? Can you? You can't just square everything, because that changes the value, right? We're gonna multiply by the conjugate. And when we do that, on top we have x plus h minus x. On the bottom we have h times x, the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. x is on top cancel, h is cancel. So really I'm taking the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. I'll give you guys a second to process that. How are we feeling, okay? So what's that limit? Over two root x. And if I said, what's the tangent line at x equals two? One over two root two. 
which I would ask you guys to multiply by root 2 over 2 and get root 2 over 4. Does that feel reasonable? Okay. All right. So, and we have an alternate form of the derivative, which can be very helpful if what we're trying to do is take the derivative at a specific point. Okay. And not all functions are um, what we call differentiable. We can't take derivatives of every single function. So uh, what do you guys remember about the graph of y equals the absolute value of x? What does that graph look like? Always positive. It is V-shaped. I don't know why it keeps switching pages. Okay. Is there a point that is tangent right here? No. Is, is there a line that, like... Okay. So what we would need to do in order to decide is it differentiable or not is, like, we can't take the limit as h approaches 0 of the absolute value of x plus h minus the absolute value of x over h because we can't do anything to combine these because we don't know if they're positive or negative. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So we can't use the forward difference quotient here. So because we can't, that's what tells us uh, we might want to use um, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the absolute value of x minus 0 over x minus 0. We can use this alternate form. And at x equals 0, we have some weirdness. So what's, what's the, as we approach 0 from the right, what is the value of this? Positive 1. Because the top's positive, and if I'm approaching 0 from the right, the bottom is also positive. How are we getting to this uh, absolute value of x minus 0 over x minus 0? So it's the absolute value of f of x minus f of c. So we can look at that one point where, so like the y equals the absolute value of x gets funky at x equals 0, right? So we can look, we can use this definition instead of this one, because this one we can't see at x equals 0. So we can just use this root x and yes. not root x. So then we use this alternate form of the derivative of x minus c, or f of x minus c, and then x minus c. Cool. All right. Now, you guys. Looking at the graph, what it, like we're basic as we approach from the right is positive one. Does anybody have a problem with me saying the slope as I approach from the right is positive one? Yeah, it's the, the one that Doesn't this look like it's positive one? Do you see how like the graph connects to our answer here? But what happens when I approach zero from the left? What does that one equal? Negative. Negative one. And does that match the slope over here? And the fact that these two limits don't equal each other says it's not differentiable at x equals zero. Likewise, we're going to check out x equals 0 at the cube root of x, or x to the one-third power. Okay, so we would, what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of um, x to the one-third minus 0 over x minus 0? Are you guys with me that that's at 1 over x to the 2 thirds?
And what is that limit as x approaches 0? You subtract your exponents. So the zeros wouldn't matter. Are we good? OK. So what is that limit? As x approaches 0? It's, well, it, it's, it, it's one of two things. It's either 0 over 0, and we can simplify. Or if it's a number over 0, we call that infinity, yeah? So this would be like 1 over 0, right? Positive or negative? Positive. What if I approach from the left? I still end up with 1 over 0, yeah? Would that one be positive or negative? It's hard with the fractional exponent, isn't it? A reminder, x to the 2 thirds is equivalent to the cube root of x squared or the cube root of x squared. Either way, when I square it, what's going to happen? Positive. Now let's think through this graph. Do you guys know what the graph of y equals x to the 1 third looks like? It's kind of like the cube root of x, only sideways. So does it make sense that my tangent line at x equals 0 is that is vertical, is undefined? Is this making sense? All right. One more thing I'm going to ask you to do. If I give you a graph, can you sketch the derivative of that graph? So let's look at this point. All right, so um, to, to, in order to do this, we're going to pick a few points. So I'm going to start at x equals 0 here. And um, I'm going to draw in a tangent line, or my appro approximation of a tangent line. If I asked you guys to approximate the slope of the line I just drew, where would you put it? Maybe at negative 3, maybe? Maybe negative 2. I feel like I did better on one side than the other. So maybe right about, he uh, right about here. Because the slope at x equals 0 is negative 3. That'd be good. What about at this point? What's the slope of the tangent line at this point? 0. Is this, you guys kind of catch what I'm doing here? Yeah. This one? Three. Roughly positive 3. We can see that line. So I'm just kind of picking random points here. What does this one look to be? ish, negative one half ish. So that would be like here. Because the slope of this line, so the y coordinate of the derivative would be negative one half. And then if I go to maybe here, I'm gonna call that negative one. What about at zero, what's happening? It's getting steeper and steeper, but negative. Are we comfortable with that? Like, steeper and steeper and steeper, but negative, yeah? Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's going towards negative infinity. And likewise, on the other side, steeper and steeper, but positive. So it's going to be up at, like, positive infinity.
and I'm done. How about that? <laughs>